Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at what I carry for a bushcraft belt kit and why I honestly don't like bushcrafting belt kits. <laughs> okay, so there is a bit of a trend in bushcrafting, especially uh, a little while back, to build ultimate bushcrafting belt kits. And even if you go on places like Etsy, you'll see bushcrafting belts and different types of suspension systems that they sell for those belts that you can, you know, add axe hang hanging loops or hatchet or tomahawk hanging loops. You can add all kinds of accoutrements, you know, different belt pouches and all these things to build out a really ultimate bushcrafting belt kit. And today I'm going to be talking about what I carry on my belt and why I don't really like or think that those bushcrafting belt kits are a great idea. So let's jump into it. Okay, so before we jump into the negatives or the cons of a bushcrafting belt kit, let's start out with one good thing about the, the belt kit. And that is the biggest advantage of having a bushcrafting belt kit over a traditional backpack or pack system, whatever you choose to use, is that by and large, you're going to have it on you at all times. Being that it's on your belt, it's going to be very close to your person, and, you know, it's something that you're probably not going to be taking off as much as a backpack. And in addition to that, it is also less cumbersome, by and large. Uh, you know, moving through the woods, you're not dealing with this pack on your back that wants to get snagged on trees or anything like that. So, you know, having something that's on your person at all times is a good is a good idea and you know it's not a bad idea the premise of having a solid bushcrafting belt kit it's like i said it's is a good thing so i don't fully discount a bushcrafting belt kit and if you're one of those people that prefers that style of bushcrafting or you can carry your necessary equipment on your belt more power to you it seems like a very good idea a very noble idea in addition you know there are pros so it's a good idea, and you know, the, the idea of having a belt kit for bushcraft is pretty solid. However, for me, it just never quite works out. And maybe that's because I prefer a little bit less traditional uh, bushcrafting equipment, so most of my stuff is fairly modern instead of like leather and you know, old school stuff which I have no problem with, but a lot of my stuff you know, tends to be nylons or plastics or stuff like that, stuff that you can kind of see in this uh, video already. In addition to that though, every time I've tried to run bushcrafting belt kits specifically, I always find them to be very cumbersome and very unergonomic. So, you know, the idea of having a piece of kit or something on you is so that you can access it and use it with fairly ready ease so you don't really have to go through a lot of steps to get the equipment out and whenever I run a bushcrafting belt kit some of the equipment is very easy to get out but some of the other equipment is very hard to get out or hard to use such as say this uh, dump pouch here you know can be very hard to access and utilize if it's on a kit with a whole bunch of, or if it's on a belt with a whole bunch of other things. So that's the first thing that I dislike. In addition to that, I'm not sure about other people, but I tend to do a lot of sitting and, you know, moving around. And whenever I have a lot of stuff on my belt, that weight tends to kind of actually be painful when I'm moving around the woods. And secondly, whenever I try to sit or like just take a break or rest, there's always some part of that kit on a full kit uh, when I had ran full belt kits in the past that was just getting snagged or just didn't want to cooperate and made it actually painful to sit down or try to rest at all. So I always found them very cumbersome and very unergonomic and really just more of a pain than they were uh, a benefit. So that's why you can see the gear up in the upper right of the screen is equipment that I do carry and that I would have carried on my belt but I've actually displaced it and you know different uh, pants that I wear require or do things a little bit differently so when I'm wearing Fjall Raven or Carhartt you know it's a little bit of a different setup but by and large I usually have an axe hanging loop uh, on my pants and all of my main go-to bushcrafting pants have some form of an axe hanging loop 
on them, so on the pant itself. So that's where I'll usually have my hatchet. And then of course, you know, my saw goes in a cargo pant pocket and my knife will either be around my neck or in a pocket of its own. So, you know, those are three tools that I immediately displaced off of the belt because they were very unergonomic and very hard to use when they were on the belt. And I found better homes for them that made my life much easier. So now that I've kind of displaced some stuff and I've removed other things such as, you know, having a water bottle is really important, but almost always, you know, if I'm going to have a water bottle on me, it's going to be in my pack and it's not going to be on a belt system or on my body personally just because a water bottle is a lot of weight and it can usually better be placed on, in a pack. So that moves over to what I do carry on the belt. So I've tried to slim it down and I really only carry just about four things on my belt religiously. Now there may be an extra thing depending on what I'm doing. Say, you know, if I'm scouting, I might have a GPS pouch attached, but by and large for bushcrafting, there's really only gonna be four things on my belt. And that allows me to keep everything spaced out, everything in a place where I can reach it with reasonable ease and in a place where that these items aren't going to be weighing me down and hurting me and they're going to just truly be you know a benefit not a detriment so the four things as you guys can see them probably been staring at them for a while is my personal survival kit my leatherman surge as i've talked about my favorite bushcrafting multi-tool then I will carry a firearm. This just so happens to be the Glock 21, but I also have a 44 revolver that I, you know, switch in between. And then lastly is a dump pouch. And usually I carry some form of dump pouch, like this Maxpedition uh, dump pouch here for material collection. So if I'm going out to get chaga or tinder fungus, it's a great pouch to have. If I'm going out to, you know, collect small game animals, it'll also work for that. You know, if I'm going out to collect uh, different fire starting or tea leaves or really anything, you know, like natural resources, having a dump pouch like this is very, very nice. Those are the really the only things I carry for a bushcrafting belt kit. Everything else is either displaced onto my pants, like I said, like the saw, the knife, and the hatchet. And then the rest is all left up to my backpack or whatever pack system I'm running. And that's the way I really prefer to leave it. You know, the pack is not the greatest thing. And once again, if you can make a bushcrafting belt kit work for you, it might be the better alternative just because, you know, you don't have to set anything down. You don't have to leave anything behind when you, you know, leave camp to just go on a short excursion. But at the same time, you know, for me, belt kits have just never really worked. And that's why I prefer to run just a handful of things on the belt and the rest of everything else is basically left between my pants and my pack. So hopefully this video has been informative and hopefully uh, this experience has been uh, interesting. As always guys, God bless and I'm out.